By the way, this is really nerve wracking when you're putting it over an edge or something. I'm gonna do it. It's so long. I'm gonna hold on to the door. But now it's just, I just think to myself like, hey, I'm impressed, like I'm I'm good enough to do whatever I want. Yeah. I can just send a message and like meet someone if I feel like it. Yeah. That's the way I think about it. I like right? that. It doesn't feel like super strange seeing someone come into the Yeah, okay. It just feels normal to me. Yeah, me too, man. Me too. Yeah. Plus it's not like I'm a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> It was crazy because I feel like pride to look, looking, finding your channel. Like I feel like the same day I was thinking, damn, I wish there was someone doing non-duality in Sydney. Like thinking yeah. about that stuff and posting about that. There stuff. is. And then there is. And then I was like, cool. No, there's, there's another guy too. Who? Uh, no Rata. No Rata. Yeah. I'm going to meet him actually. Let's do it. Um, we can all link up. Yeah, so this guy's like very much self inquiry. Like, Surely. Surely. Yeah, for me, I feel like if I'm, te if I'm going to teach him, I'm like a guy that likes different elements from everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm super experimental. Like, I, I just tried like so many different techniques. Yeah. And I just want to like put it into like one thing. It's just like, like being able to, like, I don't know, like put it together and thinking of like, what, what is the best, like the best dog, like the art, like how it's arranged and stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I'm being, working on a book. Yeah. But then, thinking of it like, okay, that's a niche, right? The niche is people that want to find a button. But is that my niche? Not. I, it, it, it wouldn't be because I feel like unless you are um, realize, yeah, I hate using that word. Unless you are realized, you can't. Yeah, you can't take back. I agree. I think I think the best. My, I also had a mate. Like um, when I like, dropped out of uni, I worked with like a mentor, like a business mentor, and he told me there's like two ways you can run a YouTube channel. Either um, you come from a place of authority and you're like teaching people yeah. that, or you come from a place of hey, I'm a student as well. This is my journey. These are my thoughts. Yeah. Like, oh, you can do that. that. That's, that's my style of movement. That's like, the my, my style as well. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, I'm not an authority, but like, I do know some stuff. But yeah. I think my realization as a progress is to realize that the people acting like they have authority go to authority. Like, it's, it's, it's completely fabricated. Oh, but there are some who just, I feel like I can see some based on the energy who can have authority, in my opinion. Well, even that authority, yeah. Coming from some energy they're putting out there, which is like I know something, but I think the, the real truth is just not knowing. Like even they didn't know, but they are fabricating the sense of like, oh, I know something. I have some knowledge that you don't. And when people see that level of like conviction, they're like, oh, this guy knows something, and they feel this need for like, oh, they know something. I need. I'm seeking that. Yeah. For me, I don't get that anymore. When I say that, I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, but it doesn't like affect me. I think I see that it's there's no grounds to what they are saying. Like, it could be helpful, but the authority aspect is like yeah, purely yeah. that. Yeah. And that's what I like about Frank is he's more like he's more like I'm just gonna talk shit. Like, and I think that's the most the truth. And that's what I think I resonate more with as a style because. Uh, if you look at gurus of the heart, they've been like, hey, I'm an authority. And people feel like these things are really out of reach. Like, oh, how can I reach there? I should also feel the same authority to be worthy or to even get there because yeah. I, I can't find this authority they seem to have. Yeah. Um, then, you know, I'm really far away. But for me, it's the realization that that authority never existed in the first place. Because there's nothing to learn, nowhere to go. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, they're kind of like fabricating it, and not even just for life, but any teacher, right? Like when I went to the workplace, I realized like, they don't know, people don't know anything, but they are faking it until they make it. They're creating conviction, or they're creating authority, or they're creating a sense of knowing to um, be perceived by others, like, oh, this guy knows, this guy is confident, this guy is... Uh, 
go to shit. That, that, you know, there was nothing that said that X equals Y when it comes to like most things in life. Yeah. There's nothing like strong, stable, solid that but, gives them that assurance. But you could argue the opposite and say that there's no such thing as not knowing either. What do you mean? I don't know. Because there's no such thing as, because all there is is knowing or not knowing. Like, there is no such thing as knowing as well. There's no such thing as knowing. Because in order to know something, that means there has to be the opposite of not knowing. I'm confused. <laughs> Sorry about it. It's okay. Like, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Like, a lot of um, people, like, fabricate the authority to come from, oh, yeah, I've had an awakening experience in my job now. Like, they have the Messiah complex. Yeah. Like, my job is to, like, help everyone and stuff like that. But also, some some people, I feel like, they just come from a place of authentic authority because they've, they've transcended both knowing and not knowing. But, like, there's no such thing. Right. Like, I don't know. I don't know. That's yeah, how I feel. That's a good point. Yeah, I think there's some truth in that. I keep perceiving uh, their authenticity as as the adult, which, yeah. which in itself is, I think, the greatest form of yeah. I think, I guess, my distinction is more like uh, when somebody. I guess it's just, I guess to put it simply, it's just more for me personally yeah. when I would see people that had that strong authority. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I created that separation. Yeah, yeah. And I think there are teachers out there, some that I even resonate with and have spoken to, that don't pull down, pull down the like facade or knowledge uh, in themselves. The fact that they're using language that is very much like. This is the way I'm being precise in what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That they're not like acknowledging, okay, I'm just using language. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally get that. Yeah. Do you have any examples of people like that? Um, one guy I follow in, in Perth, he's called Bishra. Okay. He got, has some great stuff, but he tries to keep stuff really simple. Really simple to understand. Um, and a big part of him is like he's being in his energy. Um, you spoke about him on Joe, in the Joe interview. Right. Yeah, like you can feel your mind become more silent. The Buddha feels really strong, and he like really intensifies that Buddha feel more than anyone has seen. Uh, so I've always like I've heard those like stories as well. Like, like being in the presence of like a realized master, yeah. you know, it can assist you with whatever your realization. I've always sort of stayed away from that. One example is like I used to be a really big fan of Sadhguru. Yeah, right. you know Sadhguru. In, he said his advertising to come to Sydney. Oh. Oh, yeah, I got spam. I got so many yeah. ads, like messages and like the volunteers calling me up and stuff. Oh shit, how come? Because I went to the Shambhavi. You know that one? No, I don't know. Like, uh, what's it called? It's, uh, what's, his, like, what's his main thing that he's selling, that main book? I forgot what it's called. Inner Engineering. Inner Engineering. Yeah, and then in that you learn like a yoga. Oh, called, so you like, get No, I attended it. So yeah, thank you. Oh shit, it's a, it's a like a four day thing. Oh, sick. I went to it. <laughs> and, and for me, or in India? In Sydney. Yeah. Sadhguru wasn't there though, but it was taught by one of his like volunteers. He was like, it was still really good. Yeah. But, uh, inner engineering is good, and what it is essentially, it's like a yoga that they teach you, which it takes like 40 minutes to do, but it's more about um, sort of aligning your body's energy prior to actually doing the meditation. Because, you know, like, say this guy meditate right now, but like, me personally, my mind would be really restless, uh, my body would be really restless, everything would be sort of, I don't know, those hurdles are still going to be there when I meditate, like right now. But if I do that, that like, the, the yoga prior, it sort of silences everything a little bit more. And I, I do resonate with that. I think it is real. I think it would help people. But for me personally, I just didn't, didn't have the... Like determination to do it for 40 minutes twice a day. I just didn't have that, so I stopped. But yeah, 
I feel like people idolize him a bit too much as well. Yeah. Well, I actually with him is like, uh, he obviously knows what he's talking about for a lot of subjects. Yeah. But then a lot of subjects he doesn't. And you're like, bullshit. Like, you're just because like, what, what do you to do when you realize, and like, you get the same question for years? Well, but then what most people are really curious about is like, like, oh, how I'm curious about this random esoteric subject that's not even like part of his knowledge or understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to answer this like a Oh, yeah. And that's what he does. He makes like a story of joke about it. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Like, I get what he's saying, but he's missing a lot of nuance. Yeah. And he's acting like he's authority on subjects where he has no authority on. Yeah. Compared to the normal person. I, I do feel like, um, because he's, I think it's inevitable as well. His ego gets a bit inflated because of his large following. Yeah. And I feel like I've seen him on videos sometimes talk down to people, which I don't resonate with because I, 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 I like when people talk to others as equals, yeah. but I feel like some people sometimes talk down on people. True. Yeah. Uh, have you seen his podcast with Joe Rogan? No, I've just seen the one uh, with, uh, who is it? Uh, Logan Paul or Jake Paul, what do you think? Oh, I haven't seen that. Right, <laughs> what's going on with that? Oh, that one's funny. So, like, um, oh, the comments are great too. Yeah. Hey, um, so, like, Logan or Jake, I, I don't know the difference between them. They brought, like, three or four of his friends. Okay. And they were, like, complete monkeys. <laughs> Asking, like, the dumbest questions. To who? To stop like, oh, I've seen that. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And the comments are, like, it's like you brought, like, three or four primates <laughs> to speak to, like, a master. <laughs> and, then, and then he said something really dumb as well. He's like, you know, yeah, you might be, like, a master of things, but, like, I'm a master of, like, what do you say, like, Pokemon or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. He said some stupid thing like that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, bro, the reason I brought up the Joe Rogan Sabu thing is because I listen to it doing work. Yeah. And I don't think people listen to Joe Rogan's podcast to finish it. But like at the end, like Sabu, like Joe Rogan and Sabu are talking about like aliens. And Sabu was like, oh yeah, like I've dealt with aliens before. And he's just like straight up saying, like, oh yeah, like I've been in the Himalayas and like we put like a, I was doing something and like the water started boiling. And I was like, what? <laughs> You know, it's just funny. I love it. At, at that point, I'm like, either Sadhguru is like a very like realized master who's even dealt with the, um, that kind of side, yeah. or he's just bullshitting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. I'm open to it. I'm open to it too. I, I did really like him a lot at one point, but we just went it away. I don't really look up to anyone like that. The anymore. thing is, just because you realize in life, it doesn't mean you're like necessarily smart or correct in all of subjects. Yeah, yeah. It just means you're realized, right? It means you have a good feel, and it means stuff happening, which generally means you're going to be more moral because, you know, that's what happens, but it doesn't mean you are. Yeah. So, I think we're moving into a place of like more authenticity where like we're not seeing these guru figures as much anymore. I think the age of sub guru is kind of dying off. A lot of Indian gurus and everything because that's the culture we have been brought up in. Yeah, yeah. And he is very like, um, he brings in a lot of those like Hindu aspects, aspects yeah. that, that you would have seen when you were like growing up and it's like you would have understood it and then he sort of like makes it understandable. Yeah. So it's like, oh, that makes sense. That's why we're doing cool jam. That's why we're doing all that stuff. Yeah, I was at an Indian wedding and we had this uh, Pandit who was really good at explaining every act. What was his name, Robbie? I don't know. Was he white? No, he was like, he was kind of scared, but he was like Indian. Because this one, because like my brother also got married like a couple years ago and he had a fun he had, he had like Robbie's like um, close friend or like protege or something and he would explain everything really good in English. Yeah, same same kind of dude. Yeah. He explained everything in English. Like, the, the, you know, you go around the fire, like, I don't know how many times. Seven. Seven times. He was explaining, like, okay, you go around, like, every time. He was explaining the reasons for every time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Balance, every single aspect of my wow. Like, I really, I, in the first time I like really resonated with like Indian weddings. Like, yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Was he like making jokes as well? A little bit, yeah. 
like about like um like the delay controlling the finances and that kind of stuff? I think so. I think my business got my business said that. Actually, it might not like our guy was like Indian, but like we were supposed to have that guy that you might have had at the wedding for our mother wedding. Yeah. Is that um, in Sydney or like in India? In Sydney. Yeah. 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 That would have been pricey, yeah. And how many guests oh. did you have? Huh? How many guests did you have? It's too many. So yeah, it was definitely very, very pricey. Like, yeah. I don't even know because my parents <laughs> don't really tell me, but like... Chef <laughs> Wapri Exactly, man. And then... Waste some money, And then afterwards, my mum's like, like, to me, she calls me Adi. She's like, Adi, make sure you don't have like, like a wedding. Like, don't have a big wedding like this. <laughs> my mum's always the same. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my brother's getting married in um, SPG at Michael Palmer. Oh, how old is he? Into, he's like 31. My brother is 12 years older than me. Oh, shit. So 32 or 33. Maybe. Mm. Hey, right. Do you have any other siblings? No. Yeah. It's a mistake, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My goal right now is like I really want to start with this YouTube stuff and then gain some traction to the point where I can earn a little bit of revenue from it. Like you know how Joe does like consulting and he even has an impact your school? Yeah. Something like that because I just want to meditate from like, I don't I don't want to work. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Like I just really hate working. I'm so against it. <laughs> Like, I don't think this has Frank Yang. I don't know if he's spoken to him. Has he ever had a job? Yeah, I feel like he's just got referrals. <laughs> huh? I, like, oh. honestly, he said YouTube for yet, right? But his YouTube channel, like, has never had the views. It's never had, like, enough to really make an impact. You look at it. No, 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 no. That much that he's had is enough, genuinely. Like, you, it doesn't take much to actually make a really good income. Right. Like, Sonny Firma, he only has 50k subscribers. Right, but Frank's never sold anything. Oh, true. Uh, but he did, he did have his fitness coaching. Right, but I don't think that's enough. You know how much he charges for like a meditation consult? Uh, meditation consult? 60 bucks. <laughs> a, a US, so. Yeah. Like, he's really underselling himself, which is fine. Like, he doesn't give a shit. Um, but if he wanted to, he could probably charge 200 people would pay. But yeah. I also think he. Isn't worth the two hundred. Okay. Because I think he just says the same things over and over again. And he's an artist. He's a creator. His yeah. value is in the art and the videos he makes. His value isn't necessarily in like one on one. Let's dive into like a trauma. Or let's dive into or a passion. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it's, it's more like, like question and answer. It's yeah. not like it's not like coaching. He's yeah. not really coaching. It's not really coaching. Yeah. 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 If, if it was coaching, then he would have more return. Customer. Yeah. And like, I think he could even get people on like a return, like, let's work together for six months kind of thing. Yeah. That's something you could even think about. Oh, what do you mean? Doing like, um, like, you can get people on to like, you know, maybe like a recurring sort of thing where it's like, hey, let's meet up like once a month, once a week, for like the next three months or six yeah. months. And then that way it's, it's more like, um, like a continuous revenue stream. Yeah. Instead of doing like a one hour coaching, which is like a one off, and then you'll never right. maybe not talk to them for like a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like thinking of like making programs for people, uh, meditation programs, like being the fitness coach. You know how they could do like a client, like what yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of an idea, thinking of that as well. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I really need to get uh, you know, to and then put out. Some, I want to put out some ads um, on like Facebook and like. Isn't that what Joe does? I think he tried it, but everybody that got didn't um, have the money. Right. I, not Joe, but Jordan. It was just his partner. Okay. Um, he put out an ad like I can help. I'm looking to help like ten people, ten women lose their anxiety. And the reason he likes that is because guys don't like to say. Oh, right. They're like way more likely to pay okay. So it's just an easier niche yeah. um, to spend your ad money on. Um, and they got a bunch of people on tours, but like, none of them had the money. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like, where do you find 
asked for a bit though yesterday. He told me that for every for every ad he posted, he would get like one DM, and he said for every ten DMs, he would convert one person. Okay, that's what he said, and he said that his course for a thousand bucks. All oh, right, what's his course? I'm pretty sure Impact You or something to do with that. Okay, because well, Impact You is free, but maybe he has like courses on it. I don't know. But I know he was like trying to teach people how to use Obsidian for thinking, and he ran people through a program. He tried to sell me on it actually. Uh, yeah, so like, I think it was like 500, like it was the first time. Like, uh, but now he just made an impact, he made an obsidian course on impact people anyway. Okay. So, like, you can kind of just like look at how he does it. Yeah, it's cool. Because you just have to try out lots of things and just see what works. You know, be like really like not perfectionistic. That's something I have to work on is like trying to figure it out and have the best understanding of like what this what I should do. Like you can't really think that's an illusion. Yeah. I just have to do things. That's what I love most about like making videos since it's easy for me now because I can just record and put it out. Yeah. And I'm not like too worried about what I'm I can be at the yeah. and it's just like it's cool yeah. and you're sowing the seeds as well but like eventually like I think having that like you're consistently posting videos when your channel does take off I think you'll get more credibility for like the that you post in the past and not only that like new subscribers will inevitably watch some of your old videos too yeah I think it'll be funny to like look back years from now and yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I have a hundred video, over a hundred videos, and I've yeah. got 110 subs now. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, it's like almost the same number of videos for subs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, to be fair, I started at like 50 subs. Because uh, I had a Club Penguin YouTube channel back in 2008. Right, right. I used to run it with my friend. So how many subscribers are like Club Penguin Yes, about 50 of them. <laughs> they probably also were kids, and they probably don't use the account either, which is why they have numbers. I'm subs. Yeah. But like 50 of my subs are just fake. Right, if right. you want to think of it like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who they are, and I'm not even sure if they've seen any of the videos. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. Oh. Who funny. knows? Maybe they're older now and they're like. Oh, and they're not the other way. That would be funny. Oh, I'll show you my um my year in review. I made a little montage my game style. Yeah. I was like super proud of this. Uh, didn't get any views. Yeah. Oh, I was on the internet that it's recorded for a show. <laughs> but then I put time to get it. <laughs> Right, that's very bright, bright, bright. Yeah. 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 But then Mike spent a month editing every single one of the videos. Oh, yeah, like he only uploads once a month. <laughs> yeah, how, how, how the hell, hell does he sustain himself? That's what I've always wondered. I always wonder how does he have the money to do what he does. I think he has much merit because he he's been a few years like working, like, like not really working, entering COVID. I think it's just reliable. I don't think he's ever worked. Like, never. Yeah, I think he studied. Like, I think Jim was his main like. Thing that he focused on. Yeah, I think he's in a very unique position with like people out of that position. But I think it's good to like have money because uh, it means then you're not attached to it anymore. Like once you have it, you're like, oh, okay. Like, you, it's not just like elusive, like, thinking like. Yeah, that's what they say. Like, um, the meaning of life isn't money, but when you have no money, the meaning of life becomes money. Something like that. Yeah. The way I, I started to have a shift where like I see money and energy now. Yeah. So 
know, like, I see it as like, we need YSL, it's not really like money, the money is a label, given it, it's just kind of like energy, that exchange of energy. That, that sounds a lot like what the new age YouTubers are saying. Yeah, I'm watching <laughs> Do you watch so, the new age YouTubers? Um... <laughs> I don't know what new age. Well, I don't know what like details new age. It's like manifestation stuff. Okay, here's, here's, by the way, here's the best thing of like. I have put him to India. I've seen that guy. I saw him yesterday. Yeah, he's right there. Yeah. That little like twenty seconds of work took me hours. Hours? Yeah, probably. Then I wanted to get it like really right. Yeah, that's. Uh, Touching my camera. That's how this happens. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they broke your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, here's a funny story. So, you might, so Flip before was the guy fighting in the ring, the Muay Thai guy. Yeah. That's my flat there. Okay. He's the pro Muay Thai fighter. And I was out with him that night, and this dude, like, long story short, like, he wanted to fight us, basically. Okay. And so, I was like, I was like, okay, I'm going to take out my camera and, like, record you. The funny thing is every time there's some crazy dude you try to put, make it real <laughs> he got real busy like he like trying to strap the camera on my hands. I don't know what happened, but it went flying. Oh, okay. I could barely find it. I had to just find my iPhone, it was like ten meters away. Don't know how I got there. Um, it's tracked. As soon as we like did that, the flat mate fucking decked with me. Oh wow. <laughs> Put him like in his arm bar, he was in the ground, like he just broke his arm. It's so good to have like a flat <laughs> And it went so quick, I have no idea what happened. It was like the craziest like three move combo you would see. <laughs> like boom boom boom, do it on the ground, like movie oh, wow. style. Uh, it was just like fuck fuck fuck. So I had that in video and like it was like a nice like transition. I feel like that's a reason. I'm I'm sure sort of Frank Yang probably probably hasn't had a fair share of my confrontation. Yeah. But I think because in the past he was so fun. Like no one would people are reluctant to like get involved. And he also acts crazy. You know like have you seen his old video? Like he acts like really crazy. Like yeah, mental. <laughs> Like he'll do the weirdest stuff. Like he'll get like um, you know those baby seats. Like you know where you put a baby on and they have their own table. Yeah. Like he went to like a, a food court where it was packed. So he grabs one and he stands on his knees and he just like slides around the whole like small for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like going up the escalator and he's eating his food on the thing and he's on his knees. He just felt like crazy stuff. No way. Would you do that? I, I, do, I do. Like, I like right, that. If you stuff. want somebody to do that with, I'm here for you. <laughs> yeah, I, li- I like doing crazy stuff. Um, I haven't done enough crazy stuff, so. Yeah. What I do when I master the art of is like going up to people and showing their face. Yeah. The only people I've done with so far is like musicians. Because okay. they're obviously playing music and you can feel more comfortable going into yeah. the clothes. Uh, but other people. Yeah. Random strangers. Frank has a video on that and he says the way he like stops, I think he's going to, I might be paraphrasing, the way he stops people from having like a negative reaction is he like empties his ego, like he empties himself out. So he's like completely neutral, like he's not. He's looking at them without ego or something like that, and then he's like recording them. So then they just, they just think, look at him as if he's an object. Yeah. Yeah, I think, okay, the more like empty you are, I feel like the, the better people react to you. Like, it's actually really sad to think about. Like, a lot of people have. A lot of like social anxiety, um, you know, kind of really talk to girls and like have relationships. Yeah. I've been in this category. Yeah. And it's really true when you are there because you ha- you're carrying this energy around with you. Yeah, yeah. You meet people, people can feel that energy on you and yeah. they react in that same way. And so they are like reinforcing your bow- sense of value oh, as like completely. worthless. Yeah, yeah. So you look at like the end, you know, end of movement and things like that. Yeah. It's like, yeah, they fucking can't get out of there. Yeah. They're like stuck in the cycle of like, even if they try to do something external, 
reality is going to push it back into the spot. Especially if you live in like a city like Sydney, like the reaction you get from, uh, like I've approached a number of girls when they first came here, uh, I was like really free, really open. Yeah. Because I was like super new in the city, I was really excited. I had some great reactions. And then after a bit, uh, Sydney kind of dulled me down and I talked to people and I talked to some girls and the reactions were like really harsh and I was like, oh man, like it's like the reality was reflecting back to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was big. But if you get used to those reactions, if you don't, if you can't clean out your internal state, you're yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I get that. Right. 100%. <laughs> and, and the biggest example of that is me doing door to door. Because there was like one one rule above all that they drilled into us, and that's have a good attitude. Yeah. And the thing is, when you lose your attitude, even though you think you're being like really. Um, confident and happy on the external. Internally, if you feel like you've lost your attitude, they somehow reflect it. Yeah. Like, they just can pick it up. Subconsciously, yeah. people can just pick it up. Hundred percent. Hey, like when I'm when I'm like buzzing, like when I'm in such a great mood, like sales just come as well. It's crazy. Like door to door, to door is the biggest like mind fuck. Like it's the biggest like it's like a it's like a it's like the war zone. Like you don't get deployed and you have to, like, you have to master your emotions. Oh, I love that. That's great, actually. You got a great job. You said you don't like yeah, it. I think yeah. it happens. No, I don't do that now, but when I did do it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Bro, get that job back. <laughs> yeah, but that burnt me up so much because naturally I think I am like a pretty anxious type. Yeah. And that anxiety would just like make me lose my appetite. It would just, you know, it would just drain my energy. Like even on weekends when I'm recharging. Yeah. Because I'd be so anxious about going back on the doors. Because like, I'm an introvert. I don't want to do that. Like I would just feel drained. Yeah. In fact, the self inquiry, when you think the door is open, like this open. Oh, yeah. 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 Great, but, great opportunity. But the people who were really good, I feel like they were very, like, they dissolved their ego a lot. Even though they had no idea what it like, was, like, meditation or whatever. Yeah, a lot of people based on their, like, patterns of, like, upbringing yeah. just happen to be in, like, great steps. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. I think what happens is, like, as a kid, if you experience a lot of, like, um, uh, trauma and things like that from school from your parents yeah. and all that and that's what gets stuck with you but if you, if you experience the opposite as a kid it's like um, you're encouraged to be bold and brave and confident and it's like you have absolute no fear like you can just talk to people without a filter like those people do the best at door to door yeah yeah, that's so true. Yeah, that's what I really like about like, really? age, uh, meditation, manifestation. Yeah. They talk about like, you know, you attract what you are and there's stuff. <laughs> And I feel like that's equally important for like realization because it's just not like an easy way that you can like start to shift your reality and become more realized through your like everyday external events and like it really changes your mindset when you realize it. Because I think traditional meditation schools have like kind of shied away from that idea because they want you to get like... I, I think the reason they shy away from that is because attachment that too and also like if you're coming from a place of oh yeah like I want to uh, I want my external like situation to be a certain way and then I can focus on realization that, that never actually happens because you get carried away with like greed and more like more ego desire so it happens and that's why I think those schools focus on hey get realized first and then if you do choose then you can choose to manifest reality but once you're at that point there's no need to manifest everything because everything's perfect yeah, I feel like for me it's been being like hand in hand, like, being hand in hand, like it's been less linear, like it hasn't been a set set of stages or path or like following this one thing, it's more been like exploring yeah. and finding like how the universe, God, reality interacts with you. Yeah. To do. Like now, it's not like I'm gonna sit down and like dissolve a blockage or bad it. It's more like I go through my life. Yeah. Something comes up that's like perfect for me in that moment to look at. Yeah. And like, so life's giving you everything you already need, like everything you need, like it's already kind of there. Yeah. And that like mindset, I don't even know if the mindset is just like what I kind of experience these days. Yeah. Um, this makes it way easier. Yeah. 
what kind of what kind of things obviously you don't talk about what you're currently manifesting but what kind of things did you manifest in the past oh I don't think I'm like super like I don't think I was super like active manifestation too oh, yeah. I'm never in the manifestation camp it's only lately that I'm like I'm thinking oh I can like actually impact my reality this like stuff has happened mm. but it's always been like subconscious where I'm like remove blockages and remove things yeah. resistances and like I've synchronized more with life yeah. like I, I kind of see it like okay life you can synchronize with it or you can not synchronize with it and yeah. synchronization just means like you have intuition and you can like follow that intuition yeah. and you can be like oh shit like the universe gave me that opportunity or somebody bumped into me or somebody tried to attack me for some reason to teach me something and you like you see that as an opportunity and you go down that path yeah. and you keep going down that path like I've seen like 11 11s and 1 1 1 zeros and like 3 3 3 every time I watch I'm like what the fuck's going on yeah. so that's like a synchronicity yeah. and like random synchronicities happen the more I synchronize with yeah. and then things naturally yeah. manifest how are you synchronizing with the world like what are you actively doing like listening to your intuition yeah yeah let's, let's think that intuition dissolving self yeah. because I think if you really attach to things then you're not synchronizing the universe I would say yeah. true synchronization is like where you're not attached to the self and so what if arises is just arising and so everything's just spontaneously better but, but further down like maybe where I am at there's only a little bit of that but I can I'm at a stage where I can like pick up on that and sometimes it goes away like you know last week I was traveling and I was a bit sick and then at the start of the month like, I was I felt like I was really synchronized and I was seeing angel numbers and then like further trip I did but it just went away and I had a lot of resistance and then after that trip it's like that it's like come back up and I'm like okay that's a sign of a unit from the universe that like when I'm more synchronized things just happen to fall in place like maybe us meeting today was like a synchronicity of me. I don't know yeah maybe. I, I used to think like that a lot and I used to see my angel number back back in like when I was younger was 911 yeah like it became it happened it like it just appeared so often but I was like just can't be a coincidence but now that I'm a bit mature I, I'm very skeptical towards all of that and the way I look at synchronicity is more about like situations I, I try and ignore numbers I try and look at situations but like this is a funny story I heard the flight sometimes when I started meditating like recently like a month yeah. ago I remember I was because I was so resistant to meditating I was going more like the psychedelic group like I did like a heroic dose of shrooms <laughs> first time doing shrooms I just did a heroic dose and I'm like I want to kill my ego it didn't work of course um, but in that, in that moment I'm like wow, I, got, I, I went into like a depression I was like it's not working like the external external things are not working so fine let me like sit down and meditate and as soon as I started meditating through a chain of events in my possession I got like five of the DMT oh nice yeah I haven't I haven't used it but the way I look at that is like it's like affirmation from the universe like hey you're on the right path like I know because it, it knew that I really wanted like something external like five of the DMT but then instead of like just doing it straight away like if I got shrooms I'll just do it straight away I was like hey let me meditate to well, I feel like a true addict yeah like you know just straight away I've only done it once yeah but it's like so now it's like I feel like okay it's like responding to me like I'm meditating they put that in my life but it's like I feel like until I reach a certain point in my meditation then I will try okay like, yeah yeah so, I see what you mean speaking of all the angel numbers yeah I feel like the reason you stopped seeing it is because you didn't want to see it. I didn't want to see it, yeah. So the universe is going to be like, oh, well, he's not into it, so I'm not going to use that as a sign of synchronicity. No, the, the thing like, is, though, it, it stopped for a bit, and then I was like, damn, it stopped now. And then I tried to force it to happen again. Yeah. Like, I tried to just look for it, but it wasn't happening. Right. And then at that point, I was just like, hey, what if it was just confirmation bias? Yeah. And then I, and then I, I guess, stopped again. Four, five, five. <laughs> is that what angel number? Anything that angel number. Yeah, actually, there's so many now. I, I mean, anything could be. Like, literally anything. Like, one, two, three, the major number. Yeah. All of them. But the hard to operate on the clocks. Because I realized you can't have, like, 
Oh, you can. Okay. What's the number? Twenty-seven. Twenty files in a day. I mean, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, but you don't have to only see angel numbers on the clock. Sure. You can see it on number plates. You can see it on like barcodes. Yeah, that's where, that's where I used to see them. Oh, okay. I've never seen it. I, I used to see it on the clock as well. But I used to see it on like number plates, barcodes. Yeah. Like shampoo bottles, stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, at the end of the day, I think the only reason you see the numbers is like, there's nothing special about the numbers, right? Yeah, it yeah. just happens to be like, that's what people collectively have started to identify, and so now it's a thing that people yeah. focus on that, and so the universe responds by giving you that. Yeah. But if we focus on like something else, yeah, that could happen too. It's just numbers are really easy. Yeah. You're always looking at them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's how it's done. Um, guy called Jiddu Krishnamurti. Uh, Jay Krishnamurti. The name rings a bell. Um, he has a very interesting approach. To, like people always asking questions like, how do I get rid of I or what is I or how do I destroy my ego or like what is God? And then he, he kind of turns it back on them and he's like, like, that question doesn't make sense. Like he kind of dissects the question itself and it's sort of pointing back to whatever he, he, he doesn't want to talk about that he has a YouTube show right. it, well, like he's dead now it, it's, it's like a uh, recording from like back in the day <laughs> yeah like Frank Tag said like when you find God drops a bed or something which yeah. I'm not there yet so I can't comment yeah. so I would say uh, just because you can't identify it. it doesn't mean you can't say, well, we've had an attacking in the universe, and I can prove that God. Uh, just like, you know, I can look at this color, and although there's, you know, technically I'm the one labeled color, yeah. there's no color. I can still see the color says there's something. Yeah. Uh, let's say in the same way you can say, well, we are in space and we can like label it as God, you can see it as God. Not that it's necessarily even useful to see it that way. Like, just because, like, that's, I think, a trap people have had with ego. It's like, oh, there's no solidified self. So, because I, I don't have this identification of self, you feel that no self. That makes it no self? Yeah. Like, not necessarily, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't remember that. But like, my point was, adding on to that, like, he used to say something that kind of resonated with me, like, even in this moment, it's like, what is there to be enlightened about? Like, he says that often. Like, what is there to be enlightened about? Like, what are you trying to be enlightened about? Like, people are like, people, sometimes people like to be enlightened about food. Like, oh, if I know what the best food is, I'm enlightened about food. Or it's like, what are you trying to be enlightened about? And I, I feel like the, the point of that question is like, to be enlightened about something means there's, I guess, being not enlightened about that thing. And that thing, I don't know, it just, it's just food for thought. It's like, what are those things called? Koans? Yeah. It's like, you know how it sort of like turns the intellectual part off when you read a koan? Yeah. I feel like his questions are like that. Like, wow. he, he, doesn't, he doesn't care about meditation or things like that. He's more about like, like he kind of dissolves you by just talking to you. Right. Yeah, I definitely felt that even when you did it. Yeah. See, my biggest reason why I'm so like infatuated with the concept of enlightenment is because I have suffering in my life and sometimes that suffering is just so extreme yeah. and I feel like in my head my expectation is that oh attaining enlightenment means my suffering is zero. And then I feel then I'm I'm complete, then I, I don't care about anything. Yeah. I, I know that's a wrong approach intuitively, but that's that's my wiring. That's alright. It's just a thought anyway. 
That's true. That's true. Before I would have been like, oh, you need to have the perfect approach, you know? You have the perfect mindset. And now I'm like, oh, it's like, yeah. it doesn't even matter. <laughs> yeah. I still, to this day, I still don't understand, like, what stream entry is, fourth part, second part. Like, I still don't understand it. Shit. I know. <laughs> Yeah, but see, like, I'll start thinking about enlightenment again when I, when I go back to work. And it's like, I'm doing something I don't like. Or it's like, I'm feeling pain that I don't like, or some mental pain even. And then it's like, then I'll, then I'll start marinating in enlightenment and I'll have to see that. That's a great entry into, like, like, when you have a lot of suffering, that's like a really great opportunity to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like a really great teacher. Yeah. Um, it was if you're like happy and content, like you wouldn't be spending yeah. your time, right? Yeah. So, if you can like find a space for that pain, you like really dive into it. And like every time it comes up, and like, oh, who's the one like, who's the one that's experiencing pain? Like, who's the one yeah. experiencing that contraction? Like, yeah. I like, feel into the energy and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking to like feeling the energy. Feeling the feeling. Yeah. 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 I, I guess I think that's a good thing because it goes beyond like verbal communication. It goes more subtle. Oh, bro, it's got even more subtle. <laughs> Never going to top shoots again. That's such a weird dessert. It's a pineapple and caramel dessert. Bottom right. The right screen, bottom right. Pineapple and caramel dessert pack. Full the right? Oh, yeah. Bottom right. Six dollars. Why you want to get it? <laughs> no, I'm just thinking how it sounds. It's just weird. Looks like a bagel. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. It's, it's like a, something with caramel and pineapple. Yeah. I don't know. Like maybe it would taste nicer. Do you want to get it? Oh, uh, I'm happy I, to get it. I want to eat it. Oh, you yeah. Okay. Oh, because it's really. Uh, I can't eat most places. Fifty fast food. Are you uh, like do you eat everything otherwise? I don't eat beef, uh, and I'm on a low carb diet. I've been reintroducing lots. It's been better. Like I, I eat out. I can eat as much as I need to go. And I go to like a restaurant, but I don't really use any to go. Okay. That's what in our uh, Hindu culture it's like onion and garlic is a very like large stick. Yeah. It's been stimulating the mind. And um, I think the reason they would come up with that is because it would affect their meditation. Like I know in Buddhism, like a lot of them don't have onion and garlic. And even prior, like there was something, I don't know if this is true, but when they used to recite like the Vedas or whatever in Sanskrit, if they had onions, they wouldn't be able to recite it properly. Some, I don't know that's true. <laughs> but it, it's just all very bro, that sounds like some BS. <laughs> it might be. Oh, the onions, they gave me some bad breath, I can't decide. I don't <laughs> I feel like uh, there's a lot of funny stuff in my business. Yeah. I feel like there's reasons for it, and then there's like new reasons for it. Yeah. And they're like different to like the original reasons. Like people take the reasons so seriously. No, I think the main reason for onion and garlic is it's very stimulating yeah. to the mind. Like, no, I see. Yeah. Just like chili, like chili can make you like more. It's like a, it's a stimulant. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Yeah. Do you think after you've started your low pod map diet, you haven't had any like stomach pain? Oh, I think like a little bit. Yeah. I definitely have something like that. And I'm just not invested in not to like be so precise with my diet. Like I eat relatively healthy. Like naturally I don't eat much sugar, I don't eat out. Like I don't eat junk food as often. But yeah, I always get like so much energy. And I feel like it's linked to my anxiety. Yeah, actually I'd say energetically it'd be coming from like a solar and sacral chakras. Maybe even root, but like usually the chakras are on your gut area. Mm. I would recommend focusing on them. Yeah. 
and then also looking into like uh, what it's all over the world, like things that oh, yeah. I'm manifesting in peace. Uh, I would say I had like a lot. Yeah. Now they're like flat out a good amount, but I think my mm. body is still catching up. Yeah. So, like where I am meant to be. Yeah, yeah. So I, I resonate with that. Like in the past, I never used to think that trauma would be stored physically, but now I feel like a lot of mine specifically is stored in my stomach. Like my yeah, that's good track. Yeah. Um, I can run you through, uh, maybe not now, but later, yeah. run you through a meditation. It's called the Pena Process. It's used in the Sedona method, which is a method that was originally used for black and white. And now it's just used to like help people let go of the It's more like a thing. But yeah. There's a bunch of really great questions. And they identify for people. Mm. There are four different um, areas you can focus on. So there are self inquiry questions related to control, safety and security, approval, and oneness and separation. Yeah. So you, you might, for example, if you're meeting somebody, you might uh, ask yourself, did I want to control this space? Do I want to control this space? Mm. And then release any energy there. Then you release energy around the group. I feel like they can help me. Okay, you know, I felt like they were trying to control me. That didn't feel great. Uh, release that energy. Then approval. Okay, I wanted that approval. Release the approval energy. You, go, you do that until you like want this. Oh, that's like quite a good process for me. Everything really comes back to what are the main steps? Uh, I can run it for later, but oh, yeah. uh, you basically release on both sides of the coin. So you release on. Uh, did I want approval from them? And then you release on. Did it feel like they wanted approval from me? Okay. Did you release any resistance to that? Until you are basically accepting what it is. Interesting. Oh, that's another thing. You know a guy called um, Dr. D. Martini? Wow. Uh, essentially, he has a system where... Um, obviously, I'm going to paraphrase in my own way. I don't understand it fully, but... It's about like, we have like strong infatuations or like resentments. We're obviously in our like amygdala, we're operating from our amygdala. And he uses a technique called like balancing, where you will like, for example, if, you, if you're infatuated with something, you will um, like list all the reasons why the opposite is beneficial. So that way your system starts thinking, oh wait, like that's also beneficial to me. So instead of being infatuated with it, you're more in equilibrium. So you have a more balanced state of mind. Could you give me an example? Yeah, I know. Right, upload. I'm uploading straight to YouTube. Oh, okay. No. Makes it real easy. Yeah.